Hello friends and family of Ruby Lane dolls. It's Rachel here live in the dolly cam and I am here live at the Grovian Doll Museum. All week we have been covering the sights and sounds and happenings of the NIATA, National Institute of American Doll Artists Convention. And it's been incredible and we have been immersed into the world of modern doll making and modern doll art and it's been a wonderful experience. But there's no way we could ever come to Pacific Grove, California without coming to the Grovian Doll Museum and speaking with Michael Canadas. And he is here right now. Hi, Michael. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for having us. Thank you for, ha thank you for coming here because you are the hardest working girl in the doll world. I have seen you this weekend just all over the place interviewing people left and right. Hello, Ruby Lane. I'm glad you made a little time for us. I know you're tired. You, hey, but you know what? The dogs, we have some they sunglasses just keep me going for you. <laughs> for after, for, for the, this evening. Uh, no, the dolls keep me going. And it is just such a wonderful thing because we know how much it means to you out there. So if you appreciate what we're doing and what we've been doing all week, the best thing that you can do for us is to like, comment and share the video yes. because it helps get it out there to more people who might be interested and don't know that we're here doing this. Right, right. So we are excited because in the last couple months you have some new acquisitions and this video is going to be so much fun because it's a grab bag. There's a little That's bit right. of everything from Barbie to characters to Skippy. So we've, we've got it all here. So we're going to go through it. I'm going to get behind the camera and you're going to take us away. Well, Rachel, I think that, um, um, as you know, I mean, I think that, um, I don't know, there's probably 60 videos of Ruby Lane in the Grovian and we are a very small museum and uh, some collect, some parts of our collection, we have a very solid area and then some we are working on adding more to the story because I really feel that museum collections, private collections, they're a reflection of the, the owners and also to what's, what story are you telling? And honestly, for me, if I can't have something new to play with, mm -hmm. there's no reason to live. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I think I a lot to, of people I watching to, will yeah, identify with I that. I have to have some new things. And um, it doesn't mean that they're always the uh, most expensive things on the planet. So I think we should probably start with chronologically. But I think, well, before we do that, I think you should get a pan of what they're going to see. And then we'll try to figure it out chronologically of what, where we're going to start. I love that they are not arranged by no. any particular order or type. I try to arrange things in most things of how they look nice and how they're how, uh, th that it has balance. That's kind of important to me because then you enjoy seeing it um, um, how it's displayed. This is such a whimsical way that you have this doll laying here. She's just she could tell so many stories. Did she just fall over? Is she well, rolling through the grass? One of our kind of most successful exhibits that we've ever done was an exhibit that we did with small bebés and we'd forgotten all the doll stands. So we had to do oh, things no. like this <laughs> and it was very, very playful. So when I was putting her together, she was not cooperating with the doll stand. So I decided, you know, she could just lay she could just lay there. We're gonna, it's called a happy accident. Yes, and, and we're gonna handle her. So that's why also too, it makes it easier for her to, uh, for us to get to her. So should we start at the beginning? Yes, I'm gonna give the this, little pan right oh, here. Oh, we have yep. the characters and German characters over here. It's just so wonderful. Uh, a couple of these, I recognize the China from the, the, the China yes, talk. Yes, but since the China talk, there's new information. So this is actually not a doll, obviously, but what's so fabulous about it in a China exhibit, look at that head. I mean, it's just incredible. And it has the uh, exposed ears. And look at the, f the facial painting. It just is exquisite. amazing. And it's, we don't know the maker of this piece, but it does say on the bottom, 
uh, Paris, 1850. Right there. How incredible. So this, this is an original Oops. price tag, um, or, or um, probably a shipping tag, and that's kind of very interesting. I wouldn't say that it's French, but it was probably you know retailed in France. But it's also a little bit naughty, if you can see. I was just going to mention um, it looks like she has a molded nipple. She has a molded nipple. Wonderful. But it's a wonderful thing to see the painting and see how beautifully it's painted, which makes me believe that a lot of the porcelain factories that painted dolls did figurines, and they put really much more work in the figurines, and the dolls were kind of a secondary thing, I believe. Now, someone will um, challenge me on that, but then the next one we're gonna go to is we're gonna hop over here, and she did not, she was in the China program, but she didn't really get any attention. And the reason is that in order to really know who made her, we'd have to dissect her and take her off her body. And I'm just not really willing to do that. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted you to see this brown hair. Again, it's a Victoria bun. It could be Danish. Incredible. It could be, I mean, no one really knows for sure, unless you can find some identifying marks. And um, this doll has the name that I just dislike more than anything, any name. Her original name is Agatha. <laughs> so it's not my favorite. It's very traditional. It's very traditional, but I just don't think, I don't think she's an Agatha. I mean, I think she's, you know, a pretty name like Daisy or Rose or something like that. So then the next one we'll go to, so we've, we're kind of leaving the 1830s. And we're going into the 1840s. So again, this is a little naughty. And this will we will ultimately put in probably a dollhouse. So she's on You can her see little, her little bottom right she's there. She's on a little chamber pot. Mm -hmm. But here's what's so wonderful about her. It's a perfume. Oh, look at that. So it's you just see it's, Just wonderful. Did you uh, acquire this as a perfume or yes. was it a yes. happy accident? Yes. Okay. It's a perfume and but Again, it was probably made by a company that made dolls. It's got the little molded bonnet and very, very, very sweet. And, you know, she's happy to be have that chamber pot. You can tell by the look on her face. And then this is another kind of in the same family. This is a frozen Charlie, which, by the way, these types of dolls are available on Ruby Lane. It's a really fun thing to collect when you're on a dolly diet and you can't <laughs> buy a $30,000 doll, you can find one of a, a frozen Charlie. We have a nice little collection of them, but now we're trying to keep ones with, you know, unusual molded bonnets or um, we have one right now that has a pair of like underpants molded. So this again is a very, very cute piece. And this will probably ultimately go in a dollhouse. So it'll go near a bathtub or something like that. Now this one is special because it has the wonderful molded bonnet, but you can purchase them uh, for under $50. Under $50, probably if you're willing to go into the $300 range, you're gonna get a really nice doll that's got some age to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't mind a little owie, you can get probably a really rare one for, for you know, not much, so right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a neat part of the market. So then I think we have to go into this girl, and we showed this in the China retreat that Elizabeth Ann Coleman and Kathy Turner did, and um, they were both delighted with this doll. This is a doll that could give you a heart attack. It really <laughs> could, and it could also really hurt you too because it's, very thick and heavy. <laughs> so being the consummate professional, Elizabeth Ann Coleman, when she got home, she looked up in her mother's um, record keeping for many, many years. And she easily identified the doll as being made by the Klosterly Company, which is um, was when this doll was made between, the Klosterly Company was in business from 18, 39 to 1870, which is really just right on with the hairstyle and everything. 
So it was uh, made in Bohe uh, what, what, what then was known as Bohemia and now is known as the Czech Republic. So by our having a workshop yes. and having the experts here, that the experts, she did all the work for us. So well, we thank have, you. She is our Bohemian girl from Bohemia, but it is a wonderful piece. And honestly, I, I, you know, we could find a body for it and put it on a body, but we probably won't do that because I do think it's just beautiful sitting on a shelf as an object of art. Just stunning. And it does have brown hair, by the way, too. If it, I don't know if it comes out in the camera, uh, that color. So then we should, let's see, where do we go next? So since we're talking Chinas, this is a wonderful little bald head China, also known as a Biedermeyer China. And um, it, we're not quite sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I could find out fairly quickly who the maker is, but I don't have it on the tip of my tongue. But what's interesting about this, most Biedermeyers are dressed as, um, or bald-headed dolls are dressed as ladies, and, but they're usually girls because they have little short necks. The ladies have long necks, and this doll, I'll just undo this, which I shouldn't have done, but see, she has a long, slender Oh, she neck. does. So that's kind of how you determine the difference between mm. a lady and a girl. Interesting. Um, that, and they would be a girl, like not a little toddler girl, but like a mm -hmm. preteen, a uh, preteen type of girl. So this is a, a nice piece, original body and wonderful clothes, just wonderful clothes. And again, you know, David and I have always liked Chinas. It's not that we didn't want to collect them. We just didn't get around to it. So now in a museum situation, you really do have to have mm -hmm. a representation of a major part of uh, 19th century uh, and 20th, early 20th century childhood, which is the China hat. And in a way, a lot of China heads to me, like say the covered wagon, it's even though they're European in origin, they're really quintessential Americana. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not called covered wagons for nothing. Right. I mean, they made it across the, you know, the great West. So we do have to represent them. So then let's see if we're going to go our next. This is an another little prize that kind of. Oh, he was hiding in there. He was hiding, but. Look at that. Isn't that a uh, maker unknown, but probably Germanic. And it is, he is an all bisque with a fabulous face, and he is obviously either a superhero or a, um, a circus performer. And, um, you know, I have in my family, a very interesting family tree, I have the Flying Newtons ac acrobats as, as my ancestors. So I'm always interested in the circus folk. He is the fantastic. And I, and I do believe he's like a trapeze artist. He does kind of yeah. uh, look like the ones that Schoenhut um, yeah, yes. produce uh, with yes. the facial hair. Yes, but uh, I mean, he's got... Much a, earlier. <laughs> but he's got a fabulous body. He's, I yes, mean, he's, he's, really he works out. A good, he's got upper body proportion. But it's a really wonderful... And we'll have to do some research. We might be able to um, come up with the maker... Um, and we'll, we will do some research on it. Now, he's going to be a little bit of a challenge because, you know, we have, where are we going to put him? So we may put him in a shadow box, um, hang him on the wall as an art object because we do like to put things in little tableaus or study groups. But then, then I can also be looking for other things to collect. <laughs> It's a good excuse. It is a good, it's really a good excuse. So we, we're kind of in the 1860s. So let's go, let's go to France. One of the fun things about this grouping here is that there's a lot of things that people are going to recognize. Yes. And this one, that, speaking of recognize, if um, you happen to collect French fashion dolls and you happen to have Marie Ternowska's book, The French Fashion Doll, or, or The Fashion Doll, The Fashion Doll, this doll is in the book. And um, I have known this doll for many, many years. And it recently came on the market, and we managed to um, uh, purchase it. And it it has a lot of study value for a museum because mm -hmm. 
It is a doll that has its original clothes that are marked from the shop. Look at and that. And the, the mark is Caliph de Baghdad. And the, the doll is marked with the same mark as the hat and the inside of the jacket is also marked. So this is really, that is... It, it's very unusual mm -hmm. other than say the Hure company. Um, and then there are others too, but it's very unusual to have clothing that's actually marked. Marked. Yes. And she's actually really cute. She's I love her big eyes. Big They're big just eyes. monsters. She's, They're she's wonderful. In the, the Hure um, genre. I mean, she's not a Hure, but she's at that time with the, again, look at the short little fat neck because she is a little, little girl. You know, enfantine. She's a, a preteen, like a nine to 12 year old, but very, very cute and really in untouched condition. It was never been messed with. And, and of course, you know, we've, we've taught a lot of classes at the Grovian uh, on doing soutache. So here we have her costumes, a wonderful waffled um, a pique and with a tiny, tiny little soutache trim oh, and a wow. little hanging uh, bag. Just a really cute, a cute little doll. So we, we're, we're doing okay with fashion dolls. But, you know, every time, every once in a while, there's one that you just can't resist. Mm -hmm. she's, she's one of them. Speaking of Sue Tash, Cheryl Williams is tuning in right now. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl, Cheryl knows a thing or two about, about Sue, Sue Tash. Tash. <laughs> she certainly does, and she appreciates a great yes, Sue she Tash. Does. She does. And uh, Cheryl is one of our great instructors that we have. And if anywhere in the world who's ever listening, if you get an opportunity to do a class with um, uh, Cheryl Williams, not all, you will have a delightful experience. Yes. She's a wonderful teacher. Um, she's very sweet and patient. She's not a fascist like I am. She's very cool and let, lets people... You keep saying yeah. that, Michael, but we also have about 70 hours of free content that you have given out to the world. Well, that's And my thank pleasure. you so much yeah, for that. Yes. Um, but anyways, hi <laughs> Cheryl. So then now, where are we going to go? So we went to France in the 1860s. Well, so we could bop on over to America. Well, do you want to go? Do you want to go out of uh, sync? Because you know what, a lot of people—they're going to know this character right here. Well, a lot of people aren't going to understand this. It's like Michael and David with composition dolls from the 1930s. Well, you know what? I think if, if you buy a doll at a fast food place that's $3, or you buy an Albert Mark, they're both they're dolls. Mm -hmm. And you have to put right. them in their content. So this is an F&B Skippy. And I mean, I just, it's just so mint. And, but I have a problem with being a third prize winner. And it evidently was at a uh, school event and it got the, the seventh prize, the Skippy doll. But it's just in wonderful condition with the original hang tags. Look and at this, everybody. If you if you had a, a Skippy comment and tell us, he, he's just incredible. And I think a museum needs to do its due diligence of having a representation yes. of everything. And this is America. Take the cardboard. Oh, take the card. Oh, yeah. David said, take the cardboard. Oh, look how cute. Out. Oh, yeah, we were missing his yes. little bow tie right there. Yes. If and, this doesn't scream America, I don't know what and does. And really, really, this is from a period in time Beautiful. when a lot, of, a lot of people were having hard times. Mm -hmm. And whoever got this doll was very, very fortunate. But what I love about comps when they're in this kind of condition, which of course this was not played with, never really loved, but you can see that the original, um, and it was probably treasured because it was, you know, a special, but it has that beautiful matte finish mm -hmm. that's really really something that i look for look for and you know we have people that have come and really tried to twist my arm to get this doll out of us but he's going to stay here for, for now now i know um some people might have some differing opinions on it but when you see and you find a doll in a box like that David just said it was treasured. I might think, well, they didn't like it or they were never allowed to play with it, so it might have been a source of pain. discomfort or pain. Mm -hmm. but What's you your know, opinion she, on that? She won the seventh prize. Seventh is still and, good. And if she really, really 
was psychologically damaged by it. She wouldn't she have would entered have him. She would have put it in the incinerator. So, right. So I think I think that it was probably You don't enter him love. into competition. Yeah, it was love. And you know what? Everybody, you know, even as a child, we all have toys that we play with differently. You have your special thing that you put on the shelf and you admire it. And then you have your other things that you can play with. Play has not really changed. Right. I think it is important for children and, or ad adults, for that matter, to learn that this is a special thing and treat it that, that that's still a great lesson to, to learn. Um, so we, we were to the 30s, so shall we, let's go into the 1870s. If you guys are just tuning in, we are here live at the Grovian and we are seeing the new acquisitions to the museum. And we just skipped from the 1930s America to 19, or seven, 1870s, 1870s France. But, yeah. And this is a C-series Steiner, and um, and little she's a wee one. I think she's probably eleven inches or so. And I love her little Popeye arms, uh, which they call these banana hands. And um, the the Steiners, one thing that's very interesting about them, they're very very lightweight. They're one of the uh, light, the lightest of the French bebés. And I think that uh, Jules Nicholas Steiner was Swiss. And he was probably, you know, the Swiss are known for being good business people. And at that, that time, exporting was by weight. So the lighter oh. the item was, the easier it would be to export. And he was probably the third, um, could be the, uh, the second or the third most successful company in We're France. We're just showing her dear little uh, yeah. shoes. And, and cute. I mean, they're, they're just cute, tiny. Cute, cute, cute. Tiny. But look at that little, this is a face like a little rose bud. She it's not a, It's not quite a rose yet. It's a little rose bud. And we have a few, uh, I think we have maybe five Steiners. But, um, you know, we just needed this... Um, needed this little example of a little cutie. And then look at the blushed. Uh, I was just gonna mention the blushed yeah, uh, eyelids and it just plays off the cheeks and yes. lips so beautifully. She has the lined lips, just yeah. stunning. And it, and it is, it's a, like a little rosebud. But I mean, I think that these are really, uh, the Steiner doll are, are dolls that are really worth people taking a look at to, you know, that it's easy to get tripped up on bruise and chameaux. But there are other dolls that need to be collected. Well, so. I'd certainly like to have a little bouquet of these. Yeah, with <laughs> lever eyes. She does not have lever eyes. Sure. Some and, uh, C um, um, A series. It's not a C. Um, a series come with set eyes and lever eyes. Hers are set, and we have others that have the lever. And I, I don't know why they did some one way and some the other, but that's what it is. But it's a, just a cute little... Um, just perfection. Piece. Wonderful. So that was, we were in France. And why don't we stay in France for a second? And we'll go up here. This is one thing we did not have in our collection. We did not have an open mouth chameau, which would be really, you know, a, a, a travesty. So when this little girl came our way, we thought this is... A great thing because it's open mouth chameau and it's a chameau of color. Mm -hmm. So it's a, just a darling little piece, and you know with this beautiful color. Um, you know, I don't. Do we know what race the doll was meant to be? No, we don't because they probably didn't understand colors mm -hmm, at right. that time. They never probably the painters had never seen anyone of this color. So it's, it's, it, she could be uh, East Indian, she could be an American Indian, she could be an African American. It's whatever was in their imagination. She is just yes, wonderful. Yes. And you know, I do like... And I love the red. I love the red, but I do like to... Um, I have a block with... I like to have our dolls of colors color be fancy. I don't like them to be maids or things like that. That's just my personal thing. The other, yes, it's, if you want to collect that, that's, that's fine with me. How do you feel about the exposition Jumeaux? Well, I, the, the one that you've shown on Ruby Lane, 
the one, the the uh, the Queen of Madagascar that came through us. And she is. That is one of the most beautiful dolls. Doll, in the world. yes, yes, and. And I think when we go to London, because you're going to have, uh, have to announce at some point that you're going to go to London in November <laughs> for Ruby Lane, and we go to London, I think we should talk about her then. Because that is a really outstanding, a, an outstanding just... powerful mm -hmm. work of art. On we so just, many levels. We just spent the weekend with all these artists. And, I mean, you had some supreme artists that you've interviewed, such as George uh, uh, Sanders, Stewart, Stewart. George Excuse Stewart, me. George Sanders is a um, actor. George Stewart, and um, but really like that, Jumeau is a world masterpiece. Yes, I it mean, is. It really is. It really is. So here's another little kid that we're adding to our around the world series, and this is a Kessner Oriental baby. But this is an all bisque. Oh, it's all bisque. It's Look at all that. bisque. So cute. And, uh, you know, we've had these before in our career, but I don't think we've ever had one this size. It's a nice sized doll. And it's just in beautiful uh, original condition and very, very cute um, size. And it is, it is the kind of doll that we need for our dolls from around the world. We have a little cabinet where you have different skin tones and different... Mm -hmm. Um, nationalities so this worked in just perfect in that area and again you know it's a just a wonderful little piece never, never it's never had the clothes removed I'm not or the shoes and really it's not that important for me to do that to take it off to check it for anything because I'll just ruin the clothes mm -hmm. so I don't really want to do that so he's going to just stay here and and it doesn't matter whatever he's got. Dolls of uh, color and nationalities was a very progressive thing for doll oh, yes. makers sure. to be doing at the time. Sure. It was but, almost like a risk. Well, there, and there was, a, there was a fascination because they didn't have television. Mm -hmm. uh, movies, yes, were around, but the movies were very, this is the very early part of movies, so you didn't really get to see people from around the world unless you were wealthy to do a, a world tour and that kind of thing. So speaking of around the world. Oh, who doesn't just go, love a googly? Let's go to the Tyrol. Oh my so gosh. Here, um, we did not have a googly <laughs> in our whole collection. We did not have one what? googly. No, we did not. Now we've had sure. hundreds of them in our career of, of our business, but we did not have a googly. And when this came our way, I just thought, that's just too cute. Oh, and his lunchbox around his neck. Well, the, uh, he's a, a or he's Kessner gathering bugs. 221. And this is called a vasculum. It's called a vasculum. And it's for, collect, it's for collecting specimens. So you would go out in the 19th century, all in America, Germany, England, um, Learning about nature was part of an education. So they would go and collect flora and fauna and uh, bird, or, you know, bird feathers, insects. They would collect them. Now the only thing, and then they put them, them in these vasculums. And then they would press them in books or they would frame them. They would make um, floral, dried floral arrangements. But what he needs is he needs a even though I don't believe in catching butterflies, he's from another era, so he needs a butterfly net. So you'd have a little butterfly net, and you go out and collect them all up. But it's really, really cute. He is and just it's, darling. It's a, it's a really nice size too. You know, little little pot belly with a little um, look at that. Uh, a, a toddler body, little joint toddler. I don't body. think I've seen a googly just as a Tyrolean yeah. child before. I mean, it's a great idea if you have a googly that has been, you know, put into Victorian polyester, but you could redo <laughs> it as a uh, ethnically clad uh, googly. So we did the googly. Now let's go to the pouty. And so this is the SFBJ 252. And the SFBJ company was the conglomeration of all of the French doll makers, except Steiner, interestingly enough. Um, and the major shareholder was Jumeau, and the production was done in the Jumeau factory. And 
we're going to talk about our characters, German characters. A lot of people don't realize that the French characters were far more financially successful than the German characters. So this is one of their, I think one of the cutest of their characters, and it's the 252 known as the Pouty. This one's tiny. And this one's tiny. Well, I mean, I've seen them wonderful, smaller. Wonderful, wonderful. But what tiny. I think is great about this, Rachel, is that it's tiny, but photographed, it looks like it's a large one. Mm. And normally I like character dolls to be fairly big because then you can see all of the, the fat rolls and the, uh, the uh, Brigitte Bardot lips and um, all of that. But I think this one comes through really well. And look at this. Look at the, uh, the, the frown the, lines. Yes. And the, I mean, it's all still there. Hopefully it'll catch on camera. Yes, we can see it. Yeah. And what I think is really cute about this, it has its original clothes, which are, it's a little knit romper suit. And um, I know that there are some collectors that don't like knit clothes, but that was part of... Um, you know, a wardrobe at that time. So I think this has a really cute little um, look to it. And then one of our friends gave us a, of course, a bulldog. A bulldog. And this is an artist-made bulldog. So she's got her bulldog that she's holding she's on She's set. To. <laughs> she's set. <laughs> and then let's move to, um, how about we look at some Albis dolls. So this just just came our way and this is a little Simon and Halbig. It's a, a little a little bug face, I think. You know, with those huge eyes. Wonderful. And just a wonderful little piece. And uh, you know, I David and I have had these and sold them and let them go. And this is a specific look that I've I've wanted for a while. So this one is going to go in the museum. We will probably have a mold made out of this mm. off of this to do a class with at some point because it's it's um, very distinctive very distinctive now the problem is going to be the eyes right now there's a little bit of uh, shortage in the the doll making world with glass eyes because we're losing the companies that create those things there so this is a really nice little piece she has some very nice clothes but right now they're in they're in conservation and then so we've got a Simon and Halbig and then we have a nice Kessner. So this is a nice Kessner. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, I just love the, the skinny boots. The skinny boots, and she's got her sleep eyes. Beautiful original clothes. And um, we never really had a, a collection of all this dolls. When I started, I, you know, I kind of thought of these as almost like accessories for dolls. So they weren't, you know, really high on my priority list to keep doesn't mean we sold them but we just didn't keep them and now as the, the cupboards are getting full these are a great doll to collect because you can get a few in but it's really a wonderful little doll with a simple little costume but really nice and then here's you know I won't glue her paint on because there you can see the plaster Kessner paint and a paint and then she's got her sleep eyes which I have no idea how they do, you know, mm -hmm. to get those eyes into that little tiny head, and they sleep perfectly. But Rachel, look at She's the beautiful so painting details. Let's get the in there. lips. It's really nice. You can always tell a higher quality doll, um, partly because of the detailing on the lips. Yes. If they have two tone or or and the lined lashes and eyebrows mm -hmm. and all those little goodies. So then I think that we have to go to, um, why don't we go to this one? <laughs> this one is so much fun. Now, uh, the Mein Liebling is not, uh, she's not a new acquisition. We've had her for a little while. And you know what? If you like Mein Lieblings, if these are dolls that you like, when I first started to look at doll books, the one that I wanted more than anything was a Mein Liebling. And at that time, those were a lot of money, uh, just a ton of money, <clears throat> and I could not afford it. Well, now they're available mm -hmm. uh, because collections are coming on the market. This is the time to buy them. Mm -hmm. So when we had the opportunity to buy this big mind Liebling with her original wig, and let me show you her dress because her dress is 
just gorgeous 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 original dress with a with a um pocket watch and in beautiful condition i mean this is if i were going to give people advice in in investing in dolls because right now i'm i'm talking as a museum but if you're ever going to give you advice these are a buy mm -hmm. this is the time Snap to them buy up. right don't wait till they're eight thousand dollars buy them now and and buy as many as you want because you could have five of them and they'll all look different and this is another doll that i really always wanted and this is the oic screaming baby and it was made by kessner and it's just it's We've all been there. We've all been there. We've all been on the plane <laughs> with this baby. <laughs> and um, what I lo love about this is we have a, we have a, and by the way, I do love babies and we do have a, a quite a collection of babies. Um, but you put this with all of the well-behaved babies and then you have drama. You, it creates a, a tableau, a vignette. Because if you look at her, she's one of those little mothers that's so calm and cool. And, and you she's know, just not you know, Yeah, yeah. And you know her baby's ruining everybody's day. He is so wonderful. And can you imagine how hard it was to create this mold? All of the undercuts for that open mouth. Oh, yes. With that tongue in there. Yeah, and I noticed that I, I need to get in there and dust that a little bit because it's a little <laughs> dirty in there. It's, and the and, beady and, eyes and are the, just and those, so And those fantastic. are glass eyes. How do, I mean, I don't know how they could get in there. They're like bezel set. To, to set those. <laughs> they're wonderful. So, I mean, there are not many of these. I mean, they're not uh, a common... Uh, doll that you find. So again, if right now if mm -hmm. it's a good time to buy them, it's the, it's the time to buy them. And when we're talking about them, everybody, you can buy a mind labeling for a few thousand dollars. You yes. can get this doll, ho hopefully for under a few thousand dollars. I, mean, I think with this doll, you would pay a little more because well, that know, one of what, course because you'd but... be you know you have to think about which we do as does it have gorgeous shoes? Mm -hmm. Does it have a gorgeous wig? Does it have a gorgeous dress? Those all add. To, they all add up. But if you are a very talented uh, dressmaker, um, you can buy a nice doll and make it a beautiful dress or go on to Ruby Lane and find right. nice wigs. And, you know, fine feathers make a fine bird. Right. So we should go to more of our character land. So um, we should probably do it chronologically. So this was one that we did not have, which is the Cameron Reinhardt um, 101, and this is Peter. He and is just wonderful. The we, character series yeah. is just... And we didn't have him. Um, I would I would like to have an, a, 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 another one of bigger size because I do like the play of bigger and smaller, but he's got a great face, wonderful clothes, a uh, nice wig... Um, and it's part of the story mm -hmm. uh, of dolls. Cameron Reinhardt with the character doll movement was extremely important. So, I mean, we have to represent them. And it's not that years ago when we kind of really were able to start collecting that we, we didn't collect them because we didn't want to. You know, we're like everyone else. There's only so much money to go around. Right. So now I'm taking advantage of the marketplace where you can buy a really nice doll for a good price. Mm -hmm. And speaking of uh, rare characters, this Elise is just phenomenal. And you know what she is, and it's it. I will be very honest. It wasn't a character that I always have always loved, but there's something about this one that spoke to me and David because some things you know we have to agree on for the museum. And some things we don't. Sometimes he likes something like whimsies. He, yeah, yeah. And and sometimes we don't. Like yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> yeah, watch, watch Victorian whimsies. Our video. You can see there are things that he. The little lobster. The or lobster no, doll. The, no, the dolls made out of um, uh, pipes. Pipes. Yes. <laughs> and um, but mostly we do agree. Yes, you. And do. this is this is one that we knew that it's a Just it's a good size luminous. for the space that we have. You know that that she could go into. And it's just, a, it's wonderful because it's got a nice classic, you know, 1910, 12 um, uh, Mariner suit and the hat and then the nice wig. It's just a really cute doll. And again, th 
These are in the not inexpensive um, range of characters, but they're they're right now a good price. Right. So it's, it's, it it's is a good time, time to, to get in a lease. Mm -hmm. It's you're still going to spend a bundle, but it's it's a it's less of a bundle than it's because yes. these are going to come full circle again, and then the price will go up. You can get a one hundred and one as a Marie or a Peter on Ruby Lane. You can, mm -hmm. and and a, and a really nice one. And then I think we are running out of dolls, so I need to get shopping. But this is going to shock. Shock, <laughs> shock, shock. The but you know what? Shock. Who didn't have one of these? Well, I'll tell well, you. Well, maybe you didn't because you I, have Don dolls. I will tell you, I, <laughs> I didn't, but my cousin Cheryl had the Barbie fashion queen, and I was pea green with envy. She doesn't have hers anymore, but I have mine now. <laughs> and um, the funny thing about Barbie is in our museum she's in a hall that sometimes when there's an event here the door is the, like the service room and the door is open and you can't see the barbie case so a lot of times but they're missed uh, here and um barbie is really let's let's give her some respect she is probably the most important doll that was ever made Oh, yeah. You could take all the dolls that were ever manufactured and add them all together, and it won't come close to Barbie. Barbie is a fashion queen. So this is the fashion queen, and I love... Everyone wanted this doll. I love original packaging. I love the colors. I love the propaganda. So if we can get something in untouched condition, I love that. Now, she had all these separate wigs, and you know now they've kind of fused to the stand which doesn't matter to me because she's never going to um, go be, you know, taken apart. And I couldn't remember today the name of, there's a ball gown that is made with the same fabric and Bradley, if he's Bradley watching, would know. Bradley <laughs> would know. But if he's watching, he would be able to tell us. But I have a little um, insight in this. My uncle was the head of worldwide security for Mattel. So I believe hmm. that this uh, suit was made off of the scraps of the ball gown because when Barbie was done with a run of um, the clothing, say that this ball gown, the, the scraps that were left would fit in this box. So they were very efficient about using every little piece. And if you can see how this is pieced together, it kind of makes sense mm -hmm. how they, they you know, didn't want to waste a thing. You would never know it, but it does make perfect sense. Yes. But it's, it's a wonderful Barbie, and it is part of the story. And, um, you know, I try to sneak these in. Um, you know, David is supportive to a certain um, point when it comes to Barbies and, um, and well, other things too. But, um, you know, so they have to kind of get snuck in. Well, it's important <laughs> to, for, to let the world know that you stand behind Barbie because she has taken a lot of flack over the years. Well, I mean, we have had people that have, I've gotten in arguments with them, and they're our friends, that they will go back to the Barbie case and say, I don't want this here. Oh. Well, um, uh, and I just have to say, well, she's a fashion doll, just like all the other fashion Right, dolls. she is. Maybe more so than they are. Right. So we, you know, we, we got to look out for our girl Barbie. And uh, and uh, Dawn, if, and Dawn. If, yes, you must. If you haven't seen our Dawn program, Google it because it it is groovy. And I think that you know, the, uh, the, I think this is this is all of my <coughs> shopping since you were here last. Well, you've so done a pretty good back. job. <laughs> it's only been about eight weeks. So is it only eight yeah, weeks? Yeah, oh. you, you've done you've done plenty. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for sharing well, your recent you. acquisitions. We love it. What can we look forward to uh, as far as uh, programs or uh, workshops that you have coming up? Workshops we have coming up. The next workshop that we have coming up is Deborah Jenkins' uh, workshop with our doll Charlotte. And uh, David, if you could grab Charlotte for me. Uh, sure. You know, he's, uh, he likes to tell me what to do, but then when I meet him, he's wandered off. <laughs> but we're, we have a, uh, a workshop coming up with Deborah Jenkins, and there's a few spots available for that. I think um, there's three. And we had um, a mold made off, off of our doll, Charlotte. And this is the model that they're going to use to dress. And 
Oh, look this at is, her this body. This is created Wonderful. for us by Carl Armstrong, who's an extremely a talented gentleman, uh, doll maker. And, and look, look at the, I mean, isn't that cute? It's so cute. And she does love have the, the kind painting of and the boots. Yes. And... Yeah. So this is what they'll be doing. That will be our next workshop. Our next event that you don't have to work at is going to be Queen Victoria's Dolls. It's a tea, and Carol Cameron from the United Kingdom is coming over, and she's going to teach us about Queen Victoria's Dolls, which she was a doll girl. She had 123 wooden dolls, and then she had doll houses and um, also um, uh, wax dolls. So she's going to teach us all about that. Oh, how and that's fun. In, that's in October also, isn't it? Wear your pretty hats. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you do have to dress nice. Sorry. It's for the queen. <laughs> and um, uh, there are some... We filled the first session, and there's a second session uh, on Sunday. Sunday, October 28th. Wonderful. So October is a busy month for us. So we'll be busy. And then I don't think we have really anything planned. Till London. Until, yeah, until London, which will be in London, which I don't know when we're going to be in London. Middle of November. Middle of November. So we're going to be at the International Doll Fair. 200 years of childhood. And the theme is 200 years of uh, childhood. And it's going to be at Kensington Town Hall. And I would imagine between me and Rachel, we will let people know uh, on the details. Facebook yes. and the details. Because we're going to have a fun time. It's going to be wonderful. The Yanks are coming. <laughs> <laughs> they are coming to town. <laughs> well, Michael, thank you so much. This was incredible. We had a lot of people tuning in. They needed their antique doll fix. Well, we're going to they... give them some more. We're going to give them some more. You know we can't as just do one. As long as you one. can hold that camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still holding it. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties a little earlier, everybody. But you stayed on because a ton of you are tuning in right now. So look, learn, share, and we will see you in a couple minutes. All right. Bye-bye.